Thanks for joining us for another edition of Weekend Winners. This Saturday night, we go harness racing at Albion Park, and you are allowed to be back on track. So we look forward to seeing everyone back at the track this weekend. It's a great program as well. This is our final meeting coming up before we officially get underway with the 2020 Queensland Winter Carnival. So we look forward to some great racing over the coming weeks, and it's a good card this Saturday night. In this edition of Weekend Winners, we are going to speak with Chris Geary and Lockie Manselman, two young men that are driving in good form and both have good books of drives this weekend. Here's another young man that's got a great book of drives on Saturday night, and it's Chris Geary. He's going to team up with Craig Cross. The big road show from Sydney rolls into town, and they're producing plenty of quality stock this weekend. Chris is with us now. Appreciate the time. No worries, Chris. Thanks for having me, mate. We jump straight into it. Race one, Culture King. This guy comes north boasting very strong form. He was beaten by a potential star last time out. His form prior was super, and you've got a nice draw here behind a horse that does possess good gate speed. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like you see, he's a very classy horse. Um, he comes up with some, some really good form. Last time out was beaten by uh, uh, Wolf Stride in the uh, regional championship. And, um, you know, they raced super time in that. And, um, you know, he wasn't disgraced either. So, um, yeah, it looks a, a really good race for him. Draw probably makes things a little bit tricky. Um, you know, if you had asked me sort of before, if you could have drawn anywhere, I probably would have said anywhere bar eight. But, um, yeah, like you said, the, the one does have good gate speed, but uh, it could be a little bit tricky. We could be, uh, um, you know, buried maybe three, possibly even four back if we elect to stay there. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll have to play that one by year. OK, so you've got some thinking to do. Uh, just with feeling for a miracle, he did take a sit last time out behind Corey Williams, so that could be on the cards again. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, like you said, he's uh, the horse is racing really well. Um, you know, it probably wouldn't um, be a form form thing you know if you, you were to leave it's back early but um, you know just the, the fact that uh, you know I think Culture King's a pretty classy horse and uh, you know as he sort of you know gets ample time to um, get into the race and uh, gets the room when needed um, you know I think he'll uh, be very very hard to beat. Is Roll with Lachlan the horse to beat? I think so um, you know it looks like probably uh, you know it doesn't have to be in the early burn but um, probably looks to press forward and um, you know if he finds a top you know he, he raced uh, I think he Raced in 53 there last week and got home really well and, and done it quite easily. So, uh, you know, if he, if he races like that and finds his way to the front again, he'll, he'll be hard to beat. OK, well, that's race one. Race two, you're teaming up with Craig Cross again here. Moreau Drive, a mare that comes north, uh, that finished at the rear of the field last time out. That was in a really strong race. Her efforts prior were really good. What are you expecting here? And what looks a pretty strong mare's race? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, uh, sort of. There's probably you know a handful of mares in that race that can all win um, with the right runs. But um, just speaking with Craig and uh, Luke earlier in the week, um, they, they, they quite like this mare, and um, they think you know she she's definitely one that's improved every time she's gone round. Um, you know, I think I think she possesses pretty good gate speed. Um, you know, has a pretty high cruising speed. Um, so if she can push forward and hopefully find the front, um, I think she'll take a lot of catching. OK, yeah, that looks like it's going to be a very competitive race, race number two. We skip over to race number four. He's a Bromac. He got the best out of this guy last time out when he was able to score. He lands the inside gate here on Saturday night, and he does have gate speed. How do you see this race unfolding? Yeah, um, it's probably a little bit of a, a tricky race. Um, you know, he's a horse that you know has a, a hell of a lot of back class. You know, you go back, you know, probably... 18, 24 months ago, you know, he was a really high quality horse and he's probably just um, taken his while to pick back up again. But um, last start was definitely more encouraging. He, you know, he had to come wide with, uh, you know, a sharp sprint and um, showed sort of a glimpse of his, his, of his old form, um, really showed some some good turn of foot um, coming wide. So uh, it's uh, probably going to be a little bit tricky to see what happens early. Um, you know, I'd obviously like to hold a forward spot without doing too much work. Um, and then whether it comes down to sort of just electing the right horse to follow that you know can probably take him close enough to the home straight um, probably going to be a little bit play by ear sort of thing um, to see what happens but in saying that there's a few horses drawn um, pretty close and handy to him that you know probably looked that they fit that category pretty well do you prefer him at the mile or the 2138 meters um, I think I think he is a better miler. Um, he can get a little bit hot and revved up in his races sometimes, but um, he actually settled really, really well last week. So, uh, you know, I'm I'm not too overly concerned. Um, although, yeah, I, I probably would have um, probably would have liked a mile. 
Okay, race five. This looks a good drive. You're on the class running here. Love my sister. Beautifully bred, a daughter of Fleur de Lille. You've driven this uh, mare previously. She's coming north with really good form, coming out of a really strong race last time out. She does look the class in this field. Yeah, definitely. Um, she probably, gate seven makes it a little bit tricky. She's not um, brilliant off the arm by any means, but um, she's definitely... Uh, Definitely can probably put herself forward at some stage. It's probably another one we're just going to have to play by ear and uh, see what the tempo is like early. There's probably a few runners down, you know, between one and four that'll like to push forward as well. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit tricky to see what happens early there. But like you said, I think um, her class will take her a long way there. All right, race six, a bridge. Now, he didn't fire a shot first up. Can we expect better this weekend? I think so. He um, he got quite keen first up. Um, you know, he just wanted to over race a little bit and. Um, when he pulled, it was sort of one of those races. They hadn't gone quick early and they were always going to run home. Um, I probably uh, probably was counting the chickens a little bit before they hatched, so to speak, in that one. But um, he, he, when I pulled, he, he moved really sharp down the back and actually done it quite strong on the bit. But um, probably just being first up and, and being a run short as well, that um, it just took his toll on him late. And um, he sort of wanted to hang, get on one rein a bit around the last corner. and probably where he lost all his ground, um, probably made the run look a little bit worse than, than how he felt. But um, yeah, he's a horse that sort of, he has a lot of back class as well. Um, you know, back to his form in Melbourne, um, I think mean, he, he might've won six or seven straight and um, looked to be quite a nice horse. So he's had a few injury problems since then. So uh, just hope that he's getting somewhere back near there and um, he's, he's in with a small shot. All right, race 10, your final drive. Key race here because you're driving roll one over, a fairly new addition to the Cray Cross stable, but he looks uh, well placed here and he's following out a good beginner in life's a jungle. Yeah, definitely. It's probably a um, perfect draw for him there, really. Um, you know, he's going to get a good run through at the start and whether it be behind leader or three fence, um, I think he's first up for a little bit. Um, so he's probably going to need the run a tad. So uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that draw. Um, and I think he's, he's a horse that probably probably needs a little bit to go his way, but um, I think it's, a, it's not an overly strong field, um, so he's probably right in that with a chance. It's a great book on paper. Which one are you looking forward to most? Um, if I could change the draw, I'd say Culture King, but um, you can't change the draw, so uh, I guess that one's all up to me, but I'll, I'll stick with him. All right, well, the pressure's on. It's, uh, it's certainly on uh, with Culture King there in the first. Appreciate the time. We'll see you at Trackside. All right, thank you. 11 races this Saturday night. One young man that's in good form and with a busy night ahead is Lockie Manslem. And he's got seven drives and he's straight into the action lining up in race number one and he's in the hot seat with us now. Lockie, appreciate the time. No, nah, no worries. Thank you. Arthur Lowe, uh, he finds himself in a pretty strong race, but he's got a nice trailing draw. What do you think his chances look like? Um, yeah, he's, he's in good form. He had a little bit of a break there and he's sort of first up this week. Um, Hopefully he gets a good run through the pack there at some point and he'll be finishing strong. All right. Well, you team up with Ron Sellis again in race three. Wink and it's over. He had a bad draw last week. His efforts prior were super. Can he bounce back this week? Yeah, I think he can. He's got a tricky draw again, but um, we'll just push forward and hopefully we can just roll on to the front end. And as he showed a couple of starts ago, when he just free rolls out in front, he's pretty hard to stop. Did he surprise you in any way that night when he went that big mile? Um, probably the time surprised me a little bit. The way he did it, I wasn't real surprised because he is a known leader and when he's out in front, he, they won't catch him. And um, The 2100 to start later, that didn't suit him. But over a mile, you just run along and he just keeps finding. OK. We move over to race five. Katara Elite is your drive. First time you've sat behind this mare, but she comes into this race boasting really strong form. Good gate speed, suited by the mile. Uh, yeah, it's actually the second time. I drove her in a junior driver's heat. Um, I think that's how I got the drive again. But uh, she's been knocking on the door. Hopefully she finds the front again, which I think she will, and uh, she'll take some catching. The Sydney mare, love my sister. She's got gate seven, but she's going to be strongly fancied. Is she, is she looming as the hardest to beat in that field? Uh, yeah, she's definitely the hardest to beat. Um, I don't think my mare will put herself to shame, though. She's been racing really well, and, um, yeah, she'll be right there. All right. Race seven. Again, you team up with trainer John Steria, our friend. Uh, he's capable, this guy. He can be a little bit hit and miss, but uh, he proved three runs ago he's capable of going good time. How do you rate his chances? Yeah, if he if he gets the right trip, um, I think he'll be hard to beat as well. He's 
He's a bit inconsistent of late, but... If he turns up and brings his best game, he'll be hard to beat. All right, race eight, Michael's desire. You know this guy will. He lands barrier one, and that's a, a plus at Albion Park or at any track, but uh, this is a race that's certainly within his reach. Yeah, it, it, it's a little bit of a step up for him, but I think Albion will suit him a bit better than Redcliffe has of late. Um, if he can hold a position close enough to him and be right there, uh, he's not without a chance either. Okay. Probably your key drive on Saturday night is the last start, Redcliffe Cup winner. Congratulations for that victory last week as well. Now, did he surprise in any way, shape or form last week? Um, no, he was he was really good. Um, coming into the race, I thought he was a good chance. Um, I When I trialled him from the stand, I said to Donny that if he can get the right trip in one of those big races, stepping away nicely... Um, He'll be hard to beat because he's definitely good enough for him. He's just got a few little tricks and of his own trade, but um, he turned up and did everything right last week and showed how good he was. Okay, you're taking on the boom pacer, speeches Silver. He's got to overcome a second row draw. How do you think uh, that challenge is looking? Um, he's definitely the hardest one to beat. Um, he's proven over and over again just how fast he really is. His win, his last win against Bridget Blue Chip and Sam is Perfection. That was something he shouldn't have been able to do, and he did it. So um, it'll be hard to beat him, but we'll be right there trying. We've certainly got uh, fitness on your side, backing up from that 2,600-metre run last week. Just on him, you mentioned he's got a few tricks. Is he easy to drive, Soul Ambition? Um, he's not the easiest horse to drive. He's nice to drive, but he just he gets hanging a bit, and it's not the best pacer. But when he's on song, he's just... A very nice horse and very hard to beat. Okay, your final drive on Saturday night, race 10, number six, the Big Cheese. The draw looks a little tricky, gate number six, but he's going to win one very soon. Yeah, he, um, he's he been racing consistent lately and Charlie's got him going well. And um, if we can just get a nice spot early and be right there, well, there's no reason he can't win either. Well, you've got seven drives. Uh, several look to have good winning claims. Which one do you like the most? Oh, uh, Probably my best winning chance of the night. It's, it's between the Big Cheese and Soul Ambition. Um, obviously, the Big Cheese, he's got a hard draw to overcome. Um, and Soul Ambition, he's got uh, speeches silver in against him. So they both got little, little issues there, but I think they can both get the job done. Great stuff. Appreciate the time. We'll see you trackside. Thank you. <laughs> Looking for the good gamble on Saturday night, part of this 11 event program? I think race eight, the PSP pace. I'm keen on the chances of lucky unlucky. Fifth run back this campaign, past two runs have been really good, and this looks a good race for him, despite having somewhat of a sticky draw. But I like his chances. Race eight, number six, lucky unlucky. If you are betting this Saturday night, please do so responsibly.